Sugar, sugar, sugar. We're going to talk about that now before we get down to business with the sport. And Jackie and Charlotte are here together with Dr. Seem Malhotra. And Dr. Malhotra is among health experts who have described sugar as the new tobacco. And you're involved in a, a campaign group called Action uh, for Sugar. Um, so basically, what are you saying? What is the message? Get it out of our lives? Absolutely. Well, I think it's important for the public to understand that there is no nutritional value whatsoever from added sugar, and the body doesn't require any carbohydrate for energy from added sugar. Now, what we've been realizing and learning over the last few years, and a lot of research has gone into this, is that the food industry have really been spiking our food with added sugar. So in the US, we know about a third of sugar consumption comes from sugary drinks, about a sixth comes from foods such as ice cream and biscuits, and those are treats that people are aware of. But about yes. half of sugar consumption, and very similar to over here, comes from foods that people don't even realize have added sugar in them, such as bread, ketchup, salad dressings, yeah. for example. Do you know, I saw, the scariest thing I saw wasn't even from a health point of view or whatever. I saw a newspaper one day, and it showed having too much sugar in your diet was like taking crystal meth or something. You suddenly went, oh, all like this. <laughs> it does awful things. Do you know the way you're... No. It does, does, oh, do you know it's... But do, it does awful things to your complexion and your skin and things, sure. doesn't it? I mean, I think, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm, uh, we know it damages health and I think what's the, what's the interesting thing is that most people have thought that sugar contributes to weight gain and obesity, which it does, but the increasing evidence is also telling us that even if you have normal weight and you have excess sugar in your diet and exercise, you're still increasing your risk potentially of developing type 2 diabetes, which is really an epidemic right. now of, of catastrophic well, proportions. Here's the scary thing, and we were talking about this today, and you think, right, you know, you don't, you say, I'll not have that cream bun, so you have some baked beans, and you think, ah, you didn't realise there was sugar in that, whatever, and you've got some sobering thoughts there, some everyday items, Charlotte, and I have. we're going to talk about the sugar content. Yeah, so you look at the obvious here, you know, you've got a bar of chocolate, that's got more than six teaspoons in, you'd imagine something like that would have a lot of chocolate in it. There's an energy drink here, that has got nearly seven teaspoons in, but if you think about, you know, some of the different things, uh, for example, you know, a yoghurt, you might think that that was a healthier choice, four teaspoons of sugar in a yoghurt, and it's things like that, I think, that would confuse people as to how you make your choice as to what's got more sugar and, and what hasn't. Isn't that the difficulty? That are these hidden, food, you know, hidden sugars in foods? You're absolutely right. And I think I'm all for people exercising personal responsibility. But to exercise personal responsibility, you need to have informed choice. And if there are hidden sugars and foods that are marketed as being low fat or zero fat and have got shocking levels of sugar up to four or five, six teaspoons, um, the public doesn't need to know what's going on. And we need to really pressure the food industry to gradually reduce this. This is what Action Sugar wants to do over the next three, three years, to reduce the actual sugar in these foods by about 30 or 40 percent, which the Department of Health have actually said will halt the obesity epidemic. It's not obvious, though, some of the things that have got sugar in. I've recently become a vegan, so that's, none of that's for me. But hold the bagel up, Charlotte. We were Googling, a, not a bagel, but a slice of bread. Even a slice of brown bread has got sugar in it. Yeah. Well, why? Why has it got sugar in it? Well, you know, for the food industry, sugar is cheap, it tastes good, and it sells. So they've got little incentive to change. It's been added to the food. The other interesting thing is that we're also realizing and learning scientifically that food, when food has added sugar, it loses nutritional value, but also it interferes with appetite. So you don't feel full. So if added sugar is put into foods, you're more likely to consume more food. So you buy food more. In, absolutely, food industry, a business like anyone else, they want to make money, uh, but this is the expense of the health of the population. Okay, so tell me this. How scary is this headline here? You see this headline here, sugar is the new tobacco. Tobacco kills. Does sugar kill? What I would say, Eamon, is that poor diet is responsible for more disease than smoking, alcohol and physical inactivity combined. Okay. And we look at dietary villains, sugar is a completely unnecessary source of calories. I'm going to put it in my new resolution to, well, reduce it. Cut reduce by how much? Well, I would try and take it out altogether. I, I had out. a sweet tooth. But you can't take it out altogether, though, can you? You can. I had a sweet tooth, like anybody else. I love ice cream and chocolate as much as anyone else. I have weaned myself off sugar. It took me a few weeks. I had a bit of withdrawal, I'll be honest. I don't crave it anymore. But Charlotte's right. So you have your brown Even bread. Sugars. And it's Everything's in... got sugar. No, in sure. So intrinsic sugars within food and fruit and vegetables, not a problem. That's glucose. But what added sugar has is fructose, and it's thought that that, that is completely unnecessary in your diet. Okay, empty well. Empty calories. That's empty what it is. And food for thought. Thank you, Doctor. Mahatra, thank you very much.